Welcome back, friends. Last guy for your time for more of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. All right, so I have no idea what we're supposed to do. So let's talk to uh, what's her name, Sasato, and see if she has any ideas. What to do? It's good news that Professor Mikotoba arrived safely, isn't it? Yes, it's wonderful. And the fact that Father has been invited to this important international event really makes me very proud to be his daughter. Your father, Judge Jigoku, us, and Kazuma, of course. There's an ever-increasing number of Japanese here in Britain's capital, isn't there? So basically, alright. So they went from two to five, so, you know, they doubled. Like the lily pad problem. Soon there'll be eight of them, oh no! And then sixteen! <laughs> well, yes, I suppose so. But London does have a population of 6 million people, so I think we're still a minority. Your eight doesn't even exist. Six is nothing. Zadison's father, who came here as a visiting student 16 years ago in Kazuma. It's almost as if some great power has been at work, drawing them here across the ocean to London. And I feel as though the waters are starting to swell again now. That did not tell me what to do in any way! Uh, ugh, okay, let's... Mm -hmm. Are you sure we've asked everything? I feel so nervous here. I ground. Uh, she says I'm sure we've asked everything, so there's got to be something we missed. Yeah, there's nothing there. And then when we do pre not present, but when we do examine, he's not there to examine. We already looked at the mask, didn't we? Is there a red dye anywhere? Hmm. Yeah, for sure. We asked about this mask, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. Uh, newspaper? Ask about newspaper. Ask about newspaper. This looks like last week's edition. What's that article circled in red ink there? It's an advertisement column, it says. To the Red-Headed League. The Red-Headed League? What's that? I don't know. I've never heard of it before, but... <laughs> hmm. Is something on my face? Clearly, this has something to do with that. Lively hair. The Red-Headed League uh, article has been entered into court. Okay, so we're now going to ask him about it. Court record. Uh, four dollars per week if you are red-headed. I kind of requested the late. Ezekiah Hopkins of Lebanon. Uh, there's big zone with entities a member of the league. Uh, four pounds a week for purely nominal services. All right, men who are sound in body and mind and above the age of 21 years are eligible. I'll apply in person on the morning of the 31st at the large market on Lime Street. So, oh, there's also this article here. Well, no, public health report, all these other things. I know I read this case in the Sherlock Holmes books. I've read this case. I. Someone actually did this in real life, too. I think I mentioned it last episode, so I'm really curious to see what they do with this. Oh, right. Oh, no, I gotta go to present. Go to present. Present. It looks as though someone circled an advertisement in this paper, Mr. Sholmes. To the red League? Hmm. Does that strike you in some way? I was thinking that just maybe it might be related... To your bright red hair. <laughs> so, at last you've learned to apply my methods, Miss Narahodo. Sorry? In the first instance, and quite indispensable, observation. Believe me, I could have seen that hair with my eyes shut. <laughs> so then, allow me to regale you with the details of my latest exploits. Regale or boast? There it is, Red-Headed League. So what is the Red-Headed League, which seems to be the subject of the advertisement you've circled? You noticed it in the paper, then. That, my dear fellow, was going to be the source of this month's rent payment. It was? How? According to the advertisement, 
The Red-Headed League is a distinguished institution of fellows of unspecified covenant. In fact, the only condition for becoming a member is having red hair. That doesn't entirely surprise me. But listen to what the lucky redheads receive once they join. An unconditional salary of four pounds a week. Oh my, four pounds a week? Is that 40 bucks or four dollars or 400? But why? What are they paying people for? That I don't know. No details are given in the advertisement. But surely every red-headed person in the country would be flocking to join in that case. Yo, why, Susie? There's no time to lose. I'll put in my application at once. So will I, just on the off chance. That might be stretching a point, I think. He's pink hair, but okay, redhead, sure. At 12 ways, they fix a number of members, you see. The trouble is, uh, the trouble is they have a fixed number of members, you see. There. Oh, I see. So once a certain number of people have joined, no one else can? But as luck would have it, one member recently passed away. It wasn't particularly lucky for the redhead in question, I feel, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> so you decided to try to join in his place? Correct. I mean, look at me. Have you ever seen such a red-headed fellow? Um, no. So why? Why did it have to go so wrong? What? What on earth happened? A blunder, Miss Naruto. Though it pains me to admit it. Your blunder. What did I actually do to your hair, Mr. Sholmes? I'm glad you asked, Mr. Sato. But you see atop my head is neither dye, nor a hairpiece. I changed the color of my hair overnight. By the wonders of chemistry. But it's permanent. Chemistry? I was conducting some research into a method of rejuvenating spent tea leaves. And in the course of my work, I stumbled upon a potion that, when taken, turns one's hair flame like red. Would you like to try it? It will make every hair on your body perfectly crimson. Oh dear, so that means somewhere else. But his eyelashes aren't red. I think I'll pass. But Mr. Sholmes, is it safe to drink? Surely it's bad for you, isn't it? <laughs> ah, amateurs are always hampered by such fears. Oh, I should never have doubted you, Mr. Sholmes. You mean to say... But of course! Ten four pounds per week. One must be prepared to turn a blind eye to a little danger. That degree of red signals more than just a little danger, surely. So anyway, how are you with folk of confidence yesterday with his new red hair? For the park on Wine Street where the red-headed week were interviewing prospective new members. What went wrong? The whole park was chalked with red-headed folk like a custer's orange barrow. I don't know what the hell that is! I queued for eight hours solid before at last I reached the front. But when the panel of interviewers saw me, they immediately said, Ah, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, are you in disguise to conduct an investigation? Ha ha ha! Ah, Jesus, yup! Hmm. Hmm. So naturally, I had no choice but to reply. Shh! Don't give me away. <laughs> After which I could do little else but turn and leave. Then this morning, when I looked in the mirror, irritation stirred within me. So I turned that pair into the police. Oh dear. What a disaster. A hurry and those two whiteheads. I have already turned in two people. Ding-a-ling-a-ling! Oh ho ho! Aha! Here's my guest now! My latest client, with money to spend! Oh, I do hope it's an exciting case, Howie! Remember, Iris, we are at present gripped by the greatest problem known to man. I must be willing to accept any case, no matter how unstimulating. Save locating a runaway, of course. Oh no! 
Don't spare anyone's feelings, will you? Oh dear, I'm afraid the hurry can lack a little tact, especially just before the wind is due. Thwack! Oh, someone's dead. Holy crap, it's her! Mr. Sholmes. Mr. Herlock Sholmes, please, oh please. Please find my husband. He's run away. I remember the voice I gave her last time, but it's this now. Ah, to upset me? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Never mind. A personal matter. My apologies. He said he's not going to find someone who ran away. And now he's been asked to find someone who ran away. Oh, the irony. What exactly are you trying to say, Mr. Narahodo? Wait, did I read that wrong? Go back, go back, go back. Uh, history. No, no, no. Rianusuke didn't say anything. Huh, so why do you... Oh, why do you dress him? I didn't say a word. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I was confused. I thought I misread. Huh. Come, my dear madam, be seated. Iris, some tea, if you please. Of course. Hmm. What's the matter, Mrs. Sato? Oh, it's... It's just that gentlewoman. I feel sure I've seen her somewhere before. Very recently. She was in the case. <laughs> yes, now you come to mention it. It was on the jury. Madam... EV Vigil, so, uh, Eve Vigil, uh, EV Vigil, EV Vigil, EV Vigil, well, we know what a Vigil is, but E Vigil, E Vigil, E Vigil, is she just evil? <laughs> e Vigil? I, eh, that's, that's all I got, that's all I got. As I explained earlier, my name is EV Vigil. What's her husband's name? I employ you to take the case, sir. Money is no object. Simply name your figure. Money and wealth are of little consequence to me, madam. Being offered a case to solve is reward enough. What? He needs money, wait. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sholmes, you are the picture of benevolence. I will, of course, make a mental note of your offer, however, for contingent reasons. I trust you remember your words also. Um, if I might inquire, sir, this gentleman and lady would be... Oh, um, me? What I'm about to tell you is should like to communicate in the strictest confidence, you understand? Oh, uh, these are my friends. I assure you, you may say before this pair anything which you may say to me. Ah, I see. I can vouch for the gentleman personally, after all. He's hard of hearing. Why did I ever get my hopes up? So we're gonna talk to her? Okay. Mrs. Vigil. Mr. Vigil. Alright. What's his name? Forgive me for asking, Mrs. Vigil, uh, but have we met somewhere before? Quite recently, perhaps? Oh, my. <sighs> my dear fellow, what is your intention? Clearly, you have no ability to differentiate the official features of the English. If you wish to invite the lady to tea, you must do so in a more gentlemanly fashion. Like, this is the way you hit on people, apparently, is you just say, have we met, have we met before? I don't know how that is a pickup, but it is. And maybe that's why I'm single. I don't know how, though. Is it possible that you're the nice young lawyer from the trial I attended last week? Ma'am. Look at that smile. Ah, I knew I recognized her. To have a man's fate in the palm of one's hand. Oh gosh, oh golly, it sends shivers down my spine. I didn't quite recognize her because she's acting so differently now. Is she? It must be very difficult for you as a lawyer, being hard of hearing, I mean. Uh, pardon? Oh dear, I'm so sorry. Don't worry if you can't hear. It was frippery, really, nothing more. <laughs> oh my god! Now look where you've started, Mr. Sholmes. Thank you very much. 
I believe it would be prudent for you to sit quietly in the corner. Yes. Tell us about your husband, madam. Mr. Vigil, my daily, daily, daily vigil. Daily vigil I get. E-vigil I don't get. Daily vigil. Okay. Okay, I've heard daily vigil before. But what's Eevee vigil? A vigil? Ever vigil? I don't know. No. Maybe it's ever vigil? I don't know. My, ver vig my, my vigil. My daily. Daily. Oh my god. Daily? Daily. We'll go with daily. My, Mr. Vigil, my daily is 40 years of age. I have a photograph here. Oh, he's gonna be dead, isn't he? Hmm, an entirely unremarkable gentleman, by appearance at least. How long have you been married? It will be 15 years this, uh, year. Wow, married only 25. We have a cordial relationship, and my husband's income is more than adequate, so we live quite comfortably. As it would appear, I need only look at you to know these things. Oh gosh. Your dress is the latest fashion. Your hat clearly regularly groomed, and your eyes are animated. They're not dead inside, is what he's saying? In short, you have no inkling as to why your husband might have disappeared, correct? That's right. He's a kind man with a strong sense of loyalty. And he rather dotes on me. Which would point to the possibility that he has been embroiled in some incident or other. Oh, that is exactly what I fear must have happened. Mr. Sholmes, I'm quite beside myself. My husband's employment is somewhat unusual, you see. What if he's incurred some miscreant's ill will? What exactly is your husband's line of work? He's a warder at the prison. Oh, it's a warden? Or, oh, a guard, a guard, okay. A guard? That is somewhat unusual? Or eating, okay. A guard? That is somewhat unusual. Prison warder. So, your husband is a prison warder? That's right, yes. Well, in actual fact, he's the chief warder, so he's the warden. Or the head guard, huh? Indeed, I see. Well, chief prison warder certainly qualifies as something as a specialist occupation. Yes, it does indeed. My poor husband must prepare those dreadful punishments and see that they're carried out. Dreadful punishments? Does she mean capital punishments? Probably. And at such times, he must occasionally spend a night or two in the prison dormitory. But for that extra responsibility, he is remunerated more handsomely than the other warders. Of course, you make no mention of my husband's work to the neighbors. Yeah, right? Yes, I do believe your prudence is justified. Tell me, at what prison is your husband engaged? Barclay Prison, Mr. Sholmes. Really? At Barclay? Oh, a fine establishment. If I'm not mistaken, there is a large cemetery just behind it. Yes, that's correct. Lowgate Cemetery. Is that the one we, we the whole thing happened last uh, episode? Huh! <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yep, yep. No! Lowgate Cemetery? The very place we were discussing in court? That's unbelievable! How many cemeteries are there? Unbelievable, my dear fellow. And yet undeniable. How come he reads his mind? Sire, Mr. Sholmes, I'm afraid you've lost me. Ah, uh, pay no heed, madam. Pay no heed. A private matter. This can't really be a coincidence, can it? It can, honestly. But it won't be. Grasmus' disappearance. So to the matter of your husband's disappearance, when did you realize he was missing? Please try not to laugh. It was yesterday. I'm sorry, yesterday? That really is recent, laughably so. The truth is, my husband does at times have occasion to spend the night away for his work. 
It's not at all out of the ordinary for him to not return home at night. But this is different. For him not to make any contact for a whole day. That has certainly never happened before. Oh, my dear Daly. Whatever can have happened? I swear if he's just at work. My dear Miss Vigil, please calm yourself. Now then, have you contacted the police? Why, naturally, but sadly. They refuse to listen to my pleas as my husband has only been missing for one day. Look, if you know someone's missing, you get the police on that shit. Like, seriously. Like, if you know, you get them on it. Because 24 hours ain't good enough. Like, it should be the moment you know someone's not not there. You get that, get on that. Because 24 hours is crucial. I was asked to wait patiently at home. In truth, Miss Vigil, I can concur with the police. However, let us not be hasty. I see no reason why we should not engage in my deductive powers to track your husband down anyway. Oh, thank you, Mr. Shones. And furthermore, let me assure you, a chance to solve the greatest problem known to man for another month has no bearing on my decision. I seek only to put a sweet smile on another Londoner's face. That's really all there is to it. Yeah, my eternal gratitude. I shall pay any sum you care to mention. You seek only to put this sweet rent in your landlady's purse. That's all there is to it. Twenty dollars. I don't know how much he actually needs. Thank you for everything you have shared with us, Miss Vigil. I believe I have all the information I need to begin my investigation. Oh, please report to me soon with good news, sir. Fear not, madam. In a day or two, I shall be contacting you with a patterning report, I'm quite sure. Unless he's murdered. So soon? Oh, how splendid, Mr. Sholmes. Good news should be delivered early, I always say. If you'd be so kind as to leave the photograph of your husband in my possession. Photograph has been added to the, the record. He doesn't look anything special. Okay. Thank you. Now allow me to show you the door. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Sholmes. You've been simply marvelous. Mad dumb. Out of curiosity, hold on a second. 36? Alright. 40. Daily Vigil? Evie Vigil. Alright. Ever Vigil, I guess? I don't know. You know, I think it every time, Howie. But how do you come out with such nonsense? Good news in a day or two. Are you sure? I can't be sure, of course, but then I didn't swear on it. I merely give the good woman some hope. I hope to be able to give her good news, one might say. After all, the rent must be paid by the end of the day tomorrow. Oh dear. If by that time I have successfully located Mr. Vigil, we shall be mutually relieved. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Narahodo? Don't look at me with those pleading eyes. Well, my dear fellow, did you hear the details of the case? Yes, my hearing is surprisingly good, actually. Excellent. And what did you make of it? Well, I was surprised to learn where her husband worked. At Barclay Prison, I mean. Ah, so you noted that? Of course. Especially with the mention of Locate Cemetery. Logate Cemetery is at the rear of Barclay Prison. Sad was renowned among us students at the university for being haunted by the ghosts of condemned convicts. Barclay Prison is where the notorious man was incarcerated. The Professor. And now water from the prison has mysteriously disappeared, it would seem. It's all very peculiar. Indeed. But nothing you can't handle, I'm quite certain, Mr. Narodo. Sorry? Run along to the prison and see what you can glean. Would you? 
It's the prison governor you want. No doubt the man is equally worried. But aren't you going to go yourself? Surely you needn't ask. I can't possibly be seen with his hair. <laughs> uh. But didn't you go to Lime Street with that hair? That was a quite different matter. It was. So if I leave it to you in your capable hands. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm rather busy. Oh, okay, so it, uh, I read that wrong. Ah, oh, God, what is with my reading comprehension? I think I'm getting old. I said it instead of I. So I leave it in your capable hands. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm rather busy. Of course you are. All right, let's move along now. You'll see the governor. Oh, wherever we go, the great detective's living room is always full of enigmatic marvels. All right, here we go. Office of the Governor Barclay Prison, which stands behind Logate Cemetery. So the governor is the warden. Just need to learn like what English words were and then what we decided to make them in American. Barclay Prison is on the outskirts of London. Back backing onto a lonely burial ground. Its four high outer walls loomed quietly before us in the fog. Having requested a meeting, we were shown to the governor's office in the watchtower. How long the watchtower? A guillotine clock, huh? That's a bit much, wouldn't you think? Hey, hey, Chekhov's gun and Chekhov's axe. All right. First number, Barclay Prison, Governor's Office. There's also a bird. Maybe we'll get a bird witness again. Can't do it twice, though. Oh, look at this guy. This place is full of hardened criminals. I can't remember the last time a civilian was doing here. And you didn't want to talk to an inmate, but to me. Now that's a man. Jesus, look at this pile. Caden. You can who I am. The go I'm the governor, Betty Caden. Hmm? Is he scared of Asians? Oh yes, it's a pleasure. I am Ryunosuke Narahodo, defense lawyer. And an Easterner, I see. Does that mean... Yes, I'm a visiting student of law from the Empire of Japan. Japan? Did you say Japan? Um, yes? Oh, there's no any way you're kind in here, laddie. Maybe you should try the prison next door, eh? I didn't notice another prison next door, sir. There's a video of speech. Anyway, we came to... Oh, uh, what? <laughs> anyway, uh, we came to ask you some questions about... I didn't like to be so direct, but... I have no intention of speaking with the likes of you suspicious-looking Easterners. Woo, racism. Look at you to my ear. So as soon as he finds out that we're from Japan, he acts like this? That surely means he's a racist. <laughs> I think it's because of the pr professor case. You think so too? I've only met one Asian and he was an asshole. He killed five people. That's one for every Asian I've met today. Uh, uh, that's two for <laughs> ten years ago. Are we really summarizing this? Genshin Asogi, also known as the Professor, was incarcerated at this prison. And then, after his execution, he apparently re-emerged from his grave in the cemetery behind the prison. Ah, I might have known. You're sniffing around about that case, aren't you? The agency. Part of the Professor's great web, no doubt. No, not at all. We're just... Get going, we... Before I punch your light suit. We're going, we're going. Clearly it goes to that killer still haunts this place. We're not going to get anywhere here. Unless we can somehow prove to this man that there's nothing suspicious about us. Governor Caden? What are you thinking, Mrs. Sato? I feel sure that name came up in conversation recently somewhere. I was wondering if whoever mentioned him might have some idea to help us. Come to think of it, I have the same feeling. 
Get the hell out! Um, either the hotel or the justice. Let's go to the justice. You said the justice would know him, right? Or not? All right, so it's got to be her, her dad or the judge then. Click on it. There we go. Let's go. Yep, talk to him. That's Professor Mikatobo over there. Oh, hello, you two. I was just taking a moment to catch up on the world now that I've unpacked. Oh, where's Judge Jigoku? Yes, he's not the relaxing sort. He's taking himself off to pay his respects to all the legal bigwigs. Having only just arrived in the country today, goodness, he is full of energy. Um, Professor, you mentioned something before? About how you'd known the prison governor at Garclay Prison? Oh, Governor Caden, you mean? So it is the same man. Father, we must speak with the governor. He's being really racist, but he refused to talk to us. He said we were suspicious Easterners. Well, I'm sure if I accompanied you, it would be a very different story. Oh, would you? That would be wonderful if you have time now! Sadly, as you can see, I'm very busy at the moment. Reading a newspaper. Busy drinking coffee on a comfortable settee? No, no, I have rather a lot to prepare for tomorrow, you know? Oh, s sorry. I didn't say that out loud, did I? You Mikatobas are alarmingly good at reading people's thoughts. <laughs> or it could be that you Narahotas are alarmingly bad at hiding your thoughts. Let's not fall out now. <laughs> I have an idea. Scribble, scribble. What's he writing on that piece of paper? Here, here, talk to these kids. <laughs> Here's a letter of introduction for you. Hopefully when he sees my name, he'll change his tune. Ah, thank you. Letter of introduction, alright. Good luck, then. I swear if we get back there and Caden's dead, I swear to god. B. I was like, how, how do I move B? That is a big dude. That's a Hagar guy right there. Blackbird line? Well, oh, back of the, the the boat ticket. Mr. Mikatoba has wonderful handwriting, doesn't he? This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Is this- is it just me, or does that make me sound extremely untrustworthy? I do wish he'd at least call you a nice young man. I'm really not sure that would help. Oh, read the back, read the back, just cause. Read the back, read the back. Blackbird line? Oh, it looks like this is some sort of steamship ticket. Yes, it's gross. First class cabin. 001. Yokohama departure, 11th of September. London arrival, 1st of November. Ah, oh, that's the boat of Perusa Mikatoba and Judge Jigoku came on from Japan, isn't it? Yes, I think it called at uh, Dunkirk on the north coast of France for a night before finally arriving in Dover. I think it's been almost a year since we arrived in Dover on the SS Buria. It seems a shame not to keep your ticket as a memento of your trip, don't you think? Yes, I agree. I have mine safely in my diary. And I keep mine in my wallet, so I have it with me at all times. Oh. Well, how strange! Where could it have gone? Are you like this on purpose, Miss Naroda? <laughs> Did I imagine it, or was that comment accompanied by a little sigh? Oh, interesting. Okay, so we're gonna keep this ticket for a while. But why? Oh, present it. Uh, wrong button. If you just cast your eyes over this, Governor Caden, what's this then? You kind of pull the wool off my eyes. You're good for nothing, Japanese student. Hmm. Mikatoba. That. That young jock from the forensics laboratory? That Mikatoba? Yes, exactly, him! Oh dear, perhaps I should have said something sooner. I'm Eugene Mikatoba's daughter, Susato. Jings! You're the young man's daughter! 
And you didn't uh, think to mention it before. I... I do apologize. Hey, well, you'd best take a seat then. Can I offer you a cup of tea, perhaps? And don't forget to try one of these really handcuffed biscuits. Huh. Your father's influence is nothing short of amazing. I'm bitterly regretting not announcing who I was from this outset now. So then, what can I do for you then? Well, we're currently investigating a case. It's one of your warders, you see. He's gone missing. Missing? That's right. It's surely been reported to you as well, being the prison governor. Hmm. I haven't uh, heard nothing of the sort. There's no missing persons in my prison. Oh. But how can that be? It's Mr. Daily Vigil, your chief warder. Eh? Vigil? That's right, his wife came to us and asked us to investigate his disappearance. Let's get the part about him only going missing to it yesterday for now. <sighs> Boy, that means something to him. Would you be so kind as to tell us what you know, mister? Hey, hey, of course. Chief Warder Vigil. You understand that Mr. Vigil is the chief warder here at the prison. Hey, that he, uh, he was. Strong sense of responsibility and dedicated to the job, no doubt about it. He was a fine warder. Why is he saying was? Hmm, sorry, did you say was? Hey, he doesn't no work here no more. He left the job. Oh my. When was this exactly? Yesterday. There's a question. When was it about? I can have been much less than... Ten years ago now. What? What? T ten years ago? You stopped working here ten years ago? Hey, is I minded. You can, I have never heard the fella's name in all that time. That's a way if he's gone missing though. But, but Miss Vigil made no mention of it. I think perhaps, Mr. Narahodo, that his wife simply doesn't know. I think she's unaware that he no longer works here. Governor Caden, can you tell us what happened? Why did Mr. Vigil give up his job here? That's important, is it? Hmm, yes, I believe it may be. What are you thinking, Mr. Narahodo? I can't help wondering. Given that it was ten years ago... Ah! Which was exactly when the professor was being held at this prison. Do they have to make a trouble? My father came to Britain all those years ago in order to study forensic medicine. But you seem to have been well acquainted. The dead room, the prison, and the cemetery have a lot to, to do with one another. After all, they need fresh corpses for forensic research. Do you, Ken? Yes, I can imagine. The advancement of medical science isn't always particularly palatable. Your father worked in the laboratory just on the far side of the graveyard. In the basement of St. Sinners. It's still in use today. St. Sinners? That's come up before, I'm sure. Yes, that's right. We'd been there. Dr. Sight. Mikotoba and I have to use to ride in a carriage together and negotiate terms. For more fresh material, I suppose. Hey, and we used to sit in here for hours and gab on about dissection and all sorts. Oh, it takes me back. Hope I put a tea and a plate of cuff biscuits, of course. That's a weird one. How charming. Hmm. He was a good fella, your father. Reliable and did sit on his work. But I'm afraid. I'll never understand you, Japanese. 
Because of Genshin is so gay, I suppose. So Mr. Vigil actually resigned from the position of Chief Warder ten years ago, you're telling us? What happened to make him leave the job? Hmm... In actual fact, he didn't leave the job willingly. He had no choice in the matter. You mean, he was dismissed? It was... after a particular walk. Sorry, a walk? Aye, that's a word for it in here. A walk to the gallows. In, in execution? It's the job of the chief warder to prepare the gallows tree and oversee any executions, you see. Only, Vigil did something unthinkable on that last walk he was manning. What did he do? I'm sorry, but... I can't reveal that information. But I can tell you that it's very rare for Chief Water to be relieved of his post. Well, why wouldn't Miss Vigil know about it? She appears to be under the impression that her husband still works here. I wouldn't have can think anything about that, I'm afraid. Can you perhaps answer one more question about the circumstances of his dismissal? And what would that be in? That last nice execution that Mr. Vigil was responsible for overseeing. Was it by any chance the professor's? My thoughts exactly! Hmm. I'm sorry, I really am. But I'm not at liberty to answer that. That confirms it. I see. Well... I can't tell you anything else. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Governor. Oh, one moment before you're away then. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. He has an axe! What the hell? Ah, found it. Here, yeah, take this as a wee souvenir of your visit to the prison. What is it? That's Vigil's dismissal notice. It's ten years old now, of course. Oh my, are you sure? Hey, he's no trouble at all. He's not the original mind. The harsh reprimand. Okay. Thank you very much, Governor Caden. Well, in return. Do me a favor and never come back here. That case is closed. Well, I think we ought to return to Baker Street for the time being. Yes, I agree. We need to report back to Mr. Sholmes with what we found out about Mr. Vigil. What will we tell Miss Vigil, I wonder? First, let's look at this thing. Hmm. Ooh, alright. So we got... You yeah, violated Clause 132 of the Majesty's Code of Conduct for Prisons. He lost his redundancy pay and other financial benefits. Aiding and abetting the escape from the prison of this convict just prior to his execution? Details of this escape are still being investigated? What? Barry Caden? Okay. I don't think there's a joke to that name. Additional notes. Indications are that the jailbreak plot was conceived prior to the convict's incarceration. It is believed that the convict engaged in some form of negotiation with the prison staff in order to secure assistance. Full disclosure of information uh, regarding those negotiations will be demanded. So, what did he do for 10 years? Just spent the money that he was given for that escape? That's my question. Alright. Uh, once we get to the next conversation, we'll stop there. First November, show him sweet. We're back! Hello, YouTube! I thought you'd be back before long, so I baked some scones for us all. 
Ah, so that's what the delicious smell is. Greetings, my dear fellows. Oh my god. He's a smurf. All right. One from fire to ice. Okay, so we'll stop there. Oh my god. Oh my golly. Right, that's it for now. I have fun up if I'm watching. That's what's all about. Having fun. Thanks for coming by and see you next time. What the hell, Shelms? What the hell?